Good evening. Welcome to This Week in Review. Tonight's stories include Work is ongoing at the site of the new health care facility. Burgio has been issued a challenge by the town of Ramya. Work is supposed to resume on the seniors complex tomorrow. The town council has declared the week of May 24th to 30th as cleanup week and more, so please stay tuned. We took our cameras to the site of the new health care facility again this week. It is no trouble to see the progress being made from week to week. A number of carpenters have been hired by Marco, the company that were awarded the contract to construct the new health care facility. There are also a number of people hired by Parsons Construction, the company that were awarded the subcontract for the site preparation. As you can see, the foundation of the structure is presently being poured and the area is being leveled off for the floor. RMHA, the Honorable David Gilbert, informed me that the company are still anticipating that the project will be completed by the scheduled completion date. I'm sure that most of you have seen posters such as this one or heard talk around town of the Participation Challenge from Crown Life. May 27th marks the 10th anniversary of the challenge and communities all across Canada are getting involved. We've been challenged by our nearby friends in Ramya. They feel they can get a greater percentage of participation than we, the residents of Burgio, can. The Crown Life Participation Challenge is a one-day friendly contest designed to motivate millions of Canadians to participate in any physical activity that makes your heart beat faster for 15 continuous minutes. People are encouraged to participate in their favorite activities such as walking, cycling, etc. Mayor McDonald has registered our community in the 1992 10th Anniversary Challenge and Ramya is our rival community. The winning community is the one with the most percentage of citizens participating on the challenge day, Wednesday, May 27th. The winner also has the honor of having its flag flown at the opposition city hall for the remainder of Canada Fit Week until May 31st. And of course, we can't win unless everyone gets out and participates. So we hope to see you there on Wednesday, May 27th. Participation Running, jumping, dancing in the street Join in the action Everybody knows it's time to get on your feet Participation You know you should and you feel so good It feels so good Participation Because it feels so good You know it feels so good Burgio Town Council has declared the week of May 24th to 30th as cleanup week in our community. Residents are asked to have their property and surrounding areas cleaned up 
and asked to place the debris near the roadside for collection. For larger objects, such as car wrecks, residents are asked to call the town office and leave their name. Let's all pull together and do our part to make our community a cleaner place. I guess most people have noticed that Irving as a crew aim to clean up some of the debris from the old fish plant in their yard. One brick building has been removed as well as a tank. These four tanks are being removed as well. Also a section of the old plant wharf has been removed. We were informed last week that work on the Senior Center is scheduled to resume tomorrow. Despite what many expected, this structure was not damaged by the inclement weather we had this past winter. With some of the heavy winds we had over the winter, there were times when I went to the site expecting to find the walls lying on the ground. Let's hope that construction resumes and the building is ready to occupy in September, as scheduled. The RCMP had an open house on Friday as part of Canada's 125th birthday. We took our cameras to their office to sneak a peek at what they had on display. Okay, first we have the Brushmaster shotgun. It's a 12 gauge. Uh, we use that for several reasons. One is to uh, shoot uh, wounded caribou that have been hit by vehicles on Bruger Road. Uh, the other is for barricaded people who have, who have themselves barricaded in, uh, in their homes. We use this. And the ammunition that we use for that is 12 gauge shells, of course, with a slug. And we use SSG. The SSG, there's 12 pellets. When you see that, Dave, there's 12 pellets that size and it causes considerable damage to whatever it hits. We also use the 308 rifle. It's the same as any hunting rifle you can buy in the Canadian guitar store or pro hardware. That's, uh, we use that for the same reason as I explained with the barricaded people, also to shoot the wounded caribou, and etc. And when it comes to our revolvers, we use 38 special revolver, which I have here. And the ammunition is used for that. You can zoom in there, Dave. There's a hollow point, and the bullet mushrooms as it enters the target, whatever it may be. And of course, we carry handcuffs. These are handcuffs. They fit on this side. And we use those to restrain people who are causing us uh, problems. And this pouch here, we carry two speed loaders. Uh, they each uh, hold six rounds. And it's, uh, all we do is empty our revolver. And within a split second, we can have it reloaded again and ready to go again. And we have two of those in each pouch. And this is the, the new gun belt that we wear today. It changed April of last year. It used to be brown, like I'm wearing here, on the red suit. Uh, this one is black. It's the new, new thing uh, that has the speed uh, release for the revolver. Uh, so that's our new thing for the future. Uh, these two sticks you see here, uh, they're both called, well most people call them belly clubs. Uh, we call them police batons. This one is made of a special Teflon and it's uh, unbreakable. Uh, we have two of those, two of these sticks are kept in each police car at all times. This one I have here is called a riot stick. And it too is used in the same way. Uh, if I encounter someone who has a knife, it's a lot better to use a big stick than it is to use my revolver. It's uh, very effective 
quite loud, and I can control my subject. system. Uh, we can talk to pretty well anywhere in Newfoundland with this and in particular we go through to Cornerbrook and uh, they can patch us through to from Port of Bass to St. Anthony to Deer Lake and this is our secretary. Uh, this is her, her place of work and we also have a computer system over here Dave. It's called Word Perfect. Uh, Judy does all of her work here or 90% of her work here now. And we don't have many other computers except we have the fax machine which is invaluable to us to get messages in and out uh, quite fast. And on the floor here we have five portable radios. Uh, they are used by the ground search and rescue team. If uh, someone is lost in over the road or in the country, uh, the uh, ground search and rescue team also has their, have their own radio systems, but these are put on police frequency and they have contact with us and with the RCMP helicopter, the RCMP boat and we can also communicate with the uh, Virgil Coast Guard. So it's, uh, those radios are very important. side alert. It's called alert and uh, alert stands for alcohol level evaluation road tester. And for those people watching, some people in this community I'm sure know what this is. We put a, a sanitized mouthpiece on the end right here. You turn the instrument on and when it's ready you blow into this mouthpiece and you will get a reading of pass, warn or fail. And if you blow a fail we return you to the office and we will give you the breathalyzer and that will tell us the exact reading of the amount of alcohol in your blood system. This one here don't, it just gives us an idea of what's there. Uh, here we have our fingerprint uh, set up here. You roll your finger out here on this plate and you put your fingerprint out here, as you can see, a sample of a couple of kids we've taken this morning. Uh, this is our camera. This is the one that we use. It's the same, it's a 35 millimeter. We take it when we go to a break and enter scene, or someone dies suddenly, or there's a serious accident where death is involved. Uh, we use these, this camera uh, on a regular basis. Uh, the other camera that we have is set up under continuously and it's used uh, to take mug shots we call them and uh, everyone that is arrested and placed in our cells overnight and charged for a criminal code offense they are photographed and put in our mug and uh, they are as you can see like some of the kids say it's like in the movies you stand up with your uh, your number the next person that we photograph We'll have number 222 two, two, and it will go into our mogul. Dave, uh, we have Johnny Bowles there. He's, uh, we have some uh, spillage of paint on the inside part of the boat and he's using paint remover right now to uh, get the paint off. And we have uh, two brand new motors. Uh, each one is 90 horsepower. And I do believe uh, when they're working to their peak condition, the boat travels at 38 knots per hour. That's in ideal conditions. We have two cell blocks, uh, one at this end of the building, and we have another at the other end. And each cell block contains uh, uh, a sink and a toilet and two bunks. And in case we have uh, female prisoners, we take them to the other cell block where they are incarcerated.
this is where our guard and matron, uh, everybody that is locked up, even, even if it's for five minutes, we hire on a guard or a matron. A matron is a uh, lady who takes care of female prisoners. And this is where they uh, do all the reports here. And they have to check on the prisoners every 10 minutes to see that they're OK. And they have a little office there uh, which has a phone and bathroom facilities. And because they have to work sometimes from 12 o'clock at night to 8 o'clock in the morning. And this is where they operate over here. I mentioned about uh, those two belly sticks we uh, use. We keep two of them in each car. We also have a fire extinguisher for in case there's any cars that uh, have an engine fire. And our radio systems you can see down here. And on the bottom, the one with the three red buttons, that's our sirene and our emergency lights on the roof. Uh, I could, I'd like to show you the uh, radar system, but uh, Constable Gisti has that in Ramia with him. Now over to Mayor McDonald with the Town Council Report. Good evening. Virgil Town Council Report. Council has been informed work will start on the Senior Citizens Project on Tuesday, May the 19th. This project is expected to be completed by September 1992. Tenders closed on May the 40th to pay the remaining 20 kilometers of the Virgil Highway. Also included in this tender is the paving of the main streets around town. This work is expected to be completed by midsummer. Virgil Town Council has declared the week of May the 24th to the 30th as cleanup week. Residents are asked to clean up their property and place all degree near the roadside for garbage collection. Also for the same week, council will take away free of charge all old vehicle wrecks. So if you have an old vehicle you want taken away, please feel free to call the town office. Council would like to encourage everyone to participate in making our town a clean place to live. A petition was received concerning rate increases for Newfoundland Telephone. If you feel your telephone rates are high enough and you are opposed to any rate increase, we urge you to drop by the town office and sign this petition. Representatives from the Department of Municipal Affairs will be in Burgio on June the 1st to meet with Council concerning the town plan. In attendance at the last council meeting, a delegation from the Mississippi area. They, pre they presented council with a petition expressing their concern about the water system in that area. However, council informed the delegation that they have applied for funding for this project for the past four years and have been turned down each time. Council also informed the delegation they were still trying to achieve funding for this project. A request was received from a resident of the Long Reach area to construct a 8 by 16 shed for storage use. His request was approved. A request from a business to construct a 12 by 40 extension to present building, that request was approved. A request from a resident of a small zone area to construct a 4 by 18 extension to present dwelling, their request was approved. A letter was received from Danny Dumeris, MHA for Labrador, concerning community quotas. As you are aware by now, Council has formed a action committee to deal with some of the problems we are facing in our community concerning the fishing industry. However, the committee will not be involved in any way concerning labor relations. These type of problems are to be dealt with by the company and the union through negotiations. All members of the action committee are advised that there will be a meeting on Tuesday, May the 19th at 8 p.m. at the Far Hall. All members are urged to attend. In closing, I would like to thank the beers of this community for getting out last Saturday and cleaning up the community. I certainly appreciate what they've done, and I think the old community certainly appreciate it. It goes to show that our young organizations are deeply involved in keeping our community clean. Good night, and may God bless. Community Events. The Line S TV bingo held on Wednesday night was won by Sean Mercer. The Ground Search and Rescue will be having a TV bingo on Wednesday at 7 p.m. Cards are a dollar each or six for five dollars and available in most stores around town or from any Ground Search and Rescue member. Scotiabank is accepting donations on behalf of the families of the miners who lost their lives in the West Tray mine disaster. 
Anyone wishing to make a donation can do so at any branch of the Bank of Nova Scotia. Upon making a donation, please indicate if an official tax receipt is required. Notice from the RCMP. It has come to our attention that young boys are using pellet guns and BB guns to break bottles and to shoot small birds around Virgil. Anyone caught using these guns will be charged accordingly. The legal age to use these guns is 16. A copy of a letter dated May 15, 1992, addressed to Gerald McDonald, Mayor, Town of Virgil, Town Office, Virgil, Newfoundland. Dear Mayor McDonald, I've tried twice to reach you by phone this week, but was unsuccessful. I know I had committed to get back to you in early May to set up a meeting for mid to late May to discuss the plant closure, but I am reluctant to arrange the meeting until we have devised in detail a plan for reopening the plant, which I can assure you we are working on diligently. As soon as Bell and I have completed our proposal, we fully intend to contact you to set up a meeting in Burgio preferably to discuss our plan. Best regards, Paul Blades, Chairman. Well, that's it for tonight's program. Please stay tuned now for the season finale of The Bandwagon. We'd like to thank Clayton for putting time into The Bandwagon to come in and host it for us. We'd also like to thank all those who came in and participated. And hopefully we will resume taping The Bandwagon this fall. On behalf of BBS and the BBS volunteers, I'm Dave Cooper. Have a great week. Good night.